All right, guys. Today we're going to talk about easing the climate. Okay, so there are a couple things that that I want to look into throughout this whole process. Right, everything is changing, and and, and when we get into the space to where um, everything changes, that we also have to look at things differently than we ever have before. And and I do think that a lot of this is the mental state of the game. And yeah, there's a lot of things that we can do to make sure that we're having conversations with our clients that are putting them in a relaxed mental state that we become a little bit more of the consistency in their world. And so I went ahead and pre wrote all of my notes. So look you there. Um, one of the very first things that I want to talk about is to be able to start validating people. We don't give enough uh, credit to people in the conditions where they're at. And when I say validate people, the biggest piece that I want you to understand is this is not validating right versus wrong. Okay. This is not validating right versus wrong. I do think people can be valid in anything because what we've done in our whole lives is we've taken what we've done growing up, how we were raised, all the garbage and junk and fun and all the little glitter and pieces that have put together our lives. Those have become our filters. And so everything that we experience it, we bring it into the world of our filters. And so those of us who have lived through things of calamity, when calamity happens, we're more attuned to be responsive to it. Those of us who haven't, we're more attuned to create a little bit of the chaos and the spin. So if I look at the breadth of what I'm doing in my world, we're in a relationship business. And so if I'm in a relationship business, I'm going to have multiple relationships with people who have been through a myriad of experiences. And so for me, if people have been through a myriad of experiences, I can't take my filters and put them into their world. I can't take who I am and say, hey, you know what? Just you're, you're going to be OK. It's going to be great. Like you're fine. Like be get over it. Like we can't have the get over it kind of conversations. And, and a lot of times we're not as blunt as the get over it side, but we don't take the time to validate people's feelings. And this is where this conversation is coming from. It's not right or wrong. It's the feelings side of things. And so if I take and I look at my clientele or if I look at where my business is going, if you're not in real estate, I think most of you are. And I look at where my business is going. If I am in contact with them and they go into freak out mode, what they're doing is taking their fears and uncertainties and they're just running them through their filters. And so they're not wrong to run them through their filters. That's been their survival mode for their whole life. And so they're valid in running those things through their filters. And so it's not a right or wrong moment. It's about validating their feelings because it's okay for people to feel these things. And the way we transition them though from the chaos of the feelings. So here's, here's, the, here's how this road begins to turn, right? I can't tell you and validate that you're right if you're going nuts. If you're going nuts, You've got to be able to pause and take a breath and take a step back. The way we do that is to find empathy. Okay. So we validate people's feelings. I, I, I hear how you're feeling. Tell me more about that. Right. The way we do that is to do it through empathy. So in an empathetic statement. So if somebody's freaking out, essentially you just call a spade a spade. Hey, I understand that you're overly stressed right now. Yes. And I understand that that's making you fearful about what's going to happen next. Yes. And you have a fear that you might be losing everything that you've built. Yes. You'll find that once you get into that space and there's a, and it sounds simple and it sounds even silly to an extent, once you really get into those empathetic states though, what you've done is created in their brain a moment for them to listen to who you are because you've, you, you've called out where they're at. When we go in and we say, Somebody's in this crazy cycle, like, hey, I don't want to sell my house. I don't know what to do. Everything's falling apart. The world's going crazy. And we go, it's really not falling apart. There, here's all the reasons why we can do some great things. We're, we're doing great. I'm immediately going to go defensive. Okay. All of our clients are immediately going to go defensive. And so in the easing side of this, the way we start easing into the conversation that we really want to have, which is how do we take the next step forward? is to be able to call it out through these empathetic statements. And so this takes some practice. I think you need to really consider what it looks like to have a script practice or a role play partner through this whole thing. But it really does make a whole lot of sense for us to be able to practice empathetic statements and to be able to speak out how people may be feeling. Because once we actually get them into a space of, speak, uh, of saying how they feel, 
now we can get into understanding why they feel that way and possibly put some things in their life that can make them move into a more comfortable direction or ease where they're at in their current state so that they can actually hear what's happening. The biggest thing on this, guys, is that data will always make us think, but our feelings will always make us act. And so if we start validating feelings, we're going to be moving them into action. We have the ability to move them into action. If we just give them data, they'll think about it, but their feelings are still overwhelming everything there is to know. I mean, everything that is going on. And so, again, kind of tread through where we're going with this. Validating feelings, the chaos that they're feeling, the anxiety that they're feeling, it's just validation of it. And the way we validate it is through empathetic statements, telling them how they feel, hearing how they feel and regurgitating it. Because once they are in that agreement stage, you're almost going to watch them go, yeah, that's how I feel. And so now we have the opportunity to go, okay, and if there was a way in which we could give you comfort, because it sounds like you say you have fear, if there's a way we could give you comfort, is that what you would want? Like, well, yeah, of course that's what I would want. May we discuss some of those options? Sure, what do you have to say? And now you can actually move them into a space to have the conversations you want. Questions are gonna be a big deal in this. And so when I look at the validation section, right, we're gonna go into the empathetic statement. We're gonna be able to then ask questions. Don't start with the why question. Our default is almost always to start with why. I feel like this is all falling apart. Well, why do you feel that way? And I want you to think about that. Anybody who asks you a why question, our immediate response is going to be to defend ourselves. Okay. Anybody who asks us a why question, our immediate response is going to be defending ourselves. And so the difference would be like, um, okay, so use a real example. I feel like the world is falling apart and, and Paige, I, I really, I want to take my house off the market. Well, why do you want to take your house off the market? I'm going to give you the log roll of all of the reasons why. And I've just put in my defensives. I don't want, I, everything's crazy. And I don't want to be like, Paige, I want to take my house off the market. Okay, Paige, I, I understand that. What do you, what, sorry, I was about to ask a, uh, the wrong question. Paige, so what does it look like? for us to take your house off the market or what would it do for you if we took the house off the market or what would you gain by taking your house off the market? So when we ask a what question, now they start to like dig into their brain a little bit better. And I didn't give you a very good example. I apologize. Um, but when we ask a what question, it just reframes us to start like participating in it. So what would that do for you if we did that? What, what would you gain? How would we do that? What, when you start to ask the what and the how questions, it just it's <coughs> thought processes. It gets us into a space to where now um, I don't have to be defensive and I feel like you're with me. So we go from validating feelings through empathetic statements, asking what or how questions that then get them to participate in it with us. And now at this point, what we've been able to do is reframe their ability to have a cognitive thought about what it would look like to take the next step forward. Because until that point, they're going to only react based off of their current feelings. And if we try to talk them out of their current feelings, they're going to dig in their heels more. And their fear is going to exceed our ability to have the conversation and we've lost them. So we've got to be able to empathize with their feelings, validate what's going on, and to ask the right questions to get them to think a little bit further beyond what's happening right now. Okay? Does this make sense? All right. So our next thing that we're going to be looking at here, if y'all are good to go, is this next one. So um, have the correct info. If I get my people to start listening to me and their climate starts to move this way. Have the correct information. I know what's happening right now with 99.9% .9 of all of us. We have all gone onto Facebook and we have gotten all of our information from Facebook and we've gotten our information from Facebook from secondhand people. And we've gone through and we've read half, Twitter comments. We've gone through and got little bits and pieces that we've put together the full story. It's funny to me to listen to Houston um, is actually a really good example of this. The climate of Houston has been fairly calm. But what was really interesting is to watch them cancel one of our biggest events ever, which was the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. So they canceled it. But when they started to cancel it, there was a rumor going around that they were canceling it. Well, once that started hitting, 
it turned into just a snowball of all of the reasons why there is already cases confirmed and they're, they're shutting it down because of the fear and that like somebody's already been there that's got it and we've got all and so it just started turning into this crazy spin cycle and it just wasn't true it was just a precaution that they were taking for everything they hadn't even released the story yet and we started making up our own story for it so everybody around us are making up all of their own stories for it a lot of us have become medical experts and we're not medical experts and so as you're talking to your clients and they they feel like they're regurgitating the information that they've had we've got to connect them to the right information the way we do that is to do it ahead of time and so the right information for me to be able to tell you is going to come from the CDC. It's going to come from your state departments. I would only ever reference anybody into those spaces. All right. I, I, I would just highly encourage you. Make sure people are connected to the right information. And the way we do that is to do it first. Before they start regurgitating all the wrong information, get this stuff out to them. I don't know if you've watched this or not, but I've gotten emails from almost every single person who has spammed me ever in their life. I have gotten an email from uh, Primary, which is where I order my kids' pajamas from, that's been a CDC letter about what we should do in precaution. Chick-fil-A has emailed me, telling me about what's going on and the CDC precautions. I've got an email from Amazon talking about it. I've gotten an email from um, uh, uh, actually the Lego store talking about it. I've gotten an email from uh, like, Everybody who I've ever subscribed to are getting ahead of this before everybody starts creating their own version of the story. And they're all sending out the same information. Here's what's happening and here's the CDC precautions. We are purposely moving into the direction to make sure we're helping you guys out. See what the challenge is, what a lot of real estate agents have done, and I'm watching it guys, and this is why I'm speaking to this. We have actually added to the, the chaos of it. Somebody posts this random ass story in Facebook. We share it and we go, oh my gosh, are you watching what's happening? We watch a business shut down and we go, oh my gosh, I'm so sad for everybody whose businesses are shutting down. We're actually perpetuating everything that's breaking. And so all the people who are around us, if they're connected to us and we're being that beacon of light, we're, we're actually destroying our ability to create some consistency of normal in their life because we're adding to the chaos. And we've got to be the space that is not chaos. When, when these kind of things happen, what, what's really interesting is that Everybody starts looking for professionals to tell them what to do. It's, it's, it is really very much a sheep shepherd mentality. Everybody starts looking for professionals to tell them what to do. In our world, we are truly real estate professionals. Nobody can go look on their Zillow app and figure out what to do right now locally with what's happening in the business of real estate. Nobody can do that. Nobody can go to any app. Even Keller Williams has an amazing app. They can't go to the app. They're relying on a professional conversation to understand what's going on and what can I do to move forward. Everybody wants to hear from somebody. I've been having this conversation with my agent since last week, and I'm watching our agents still have a ton of appointments. I had a gal walk in this morning to talk about her conversations that she's having. She, in her prospecting, has opened the door to people just asking her curious questions about what to do next. And it's been really fun to listen to those stories like, turn into these really great relationships. Our agents are creating raving fans because we're getting ahead of the conversation and we're the ones bringing the information to them. We're the ones opening up the door to the conversation about real estate and about building wealth. We're the ones who are digging into our database and going, hey, I'm just calling to see if everything's okay. And if it's not, what can I do to help you? We've got to be a sense of normalcy. And so have the right information. If you don't have the right information, you are only ever going to recreate the spin cycle. Um, I've watched a few of my own family members even get into this gauge. It's like, guys, like no good comes from half truths. No good comes from hearsay. No good comes from the telephone, right? The, as in the telephone game. Like he said, she said that he said that the dog said, none of that is good. We've got to be able to be the positive aspect of it and move in that direction. Be accepting. So this is the next thing I'm going to talk about. Be accepting. So, um, and this is what I wrote here. This is not the climate to win or be right. Okay. This is not the time in our life to be right or to win. The giving economy is now the most important piece to the puzzle. The giving economy right now is one of the most important pieces to the puzzle. We have opportunity to create really strong relationships. We are in a relationship business. 
And so we need to be accepting of people exactly where they're at, wherever their fears are, be accepting. I know this is a little bit like validation, but you've got to be a little bit in a different box to be accepting. There is no win in this. There is no you're right in this. And a lot of times our challenge about being the hero, because a lot of real estate agents have a hero complex. We want to be right or we want to win. Really what we need to be right now is 100% accepting. We need to be able to meet people where they're at and just have the simplicity of the conversation. We don't have to be the one who's wielding the sword saying, everybody brave heart with me and we're going to knock this out. It's going to continue to um, develop. This is all going to continue to develop. And I'm not a doom and gloom guy whatsoever. If you know me, uh, Nicole knows me really well. Paige knows me really well. Uh, Eileen knows me really well. I'm a super positive dude. Like, I love this. This is this is exciting to me. And I'm telling you, what's happening right now in these next, in the last week and these next two weeks, it will take the entire year to recover from. There's just too much that has dripped into a timeline that we can't stop. Import, export, oil and gas, the market, all of those things swirl into a very, very specific like trail we can't stop it we don't have that capacity to stop it so the best thing that we can do is to capitalize on it and the way we capitalize on it is being the ones who have raving fans being the ones who have built relationships everybody else in real estate who has done transactional business up until this point will be losing a percentage of their business those who have a relationship business will not lose their business they're going to they're going to drop your it, it is going to be a little bit less that's just real. I just want to speak truth. I want to respect what's happening, but we can work like it's not and we can move in the direction like it's not and we can put all of our efforts into taking the best step forward. So be accepting, be accepting. The last thing I wrote down here is it's a time for advocates, advocacy. Um, I can be accepting and then allow my world to be an advocate, like be an advocate. I don't have to win or lose. I can be an advocate for where they're at. So if they're in a position of fear, that's okay. We can advocate for them through their fear. We just can. You've got to be a little bit more outside of yourself. You got to be a little bit more sacrificial, a little bit more caring. You got to bottle up some of the stuff in your own world. And you just got to be an advocate for them. You got to be able to help them to understand how moving forward is possible. Every single day can be a next step forward. So validate them, but you're validating their feelings because feelings create activity. You're doing that through empathetic statements and then through those empathetic statements, asking all the right questions. You've got, got to be able to have the correct info, right? So you be poised with the correct info and don't be the person who has to give the info, be the source for where to go to get the right stuff. Because even you translating it can create some confusion. Connect them to the info that's going to help them make the best decision for them and their family. And then be accepting. Make sure that this is a time when you're becoming an advocate. Okay. Be proof. This is what it says. Be proof of normal and creative. Be proof that this is a time for normal and it's a time for creativity. I think people are excited to watch the creativity happening all around them. I've watched the comments light up on one of our gals who was, uh, she was hosting an open house. Um, and she was going through all this. She did a quick tour of like, hey, this is normal and we're okay. Watch. She creaked the door open. She was like, door's open. You don't have to use the doorknob. You walk in, there's gloves. Does anybody want gloves? Shoes if people want shoes. She has Lysol ready for them, pumping stuff. She's everything there for them to feel like they are taken care of. Um, every time somebody leaves, she she watched and she, she did a thing where she went through and she showed everybody, like, watch me wipe everything else down that everybody would have touched. And she was just very specific about being careful and showing on video like, hey, we are being careful. Hey, this is still an OK place to be. And then I've watched another guy who's been posting stuff. Every time he gets a check, he's posting it. Every time he gets anything that he's doing, he's showing houses, he's posting it. I would encourage you to do this. Like, right, if I get something that I normally wouldn't be a braggish about, and you don't have to be braggish, but I wouldn't post it because I think it feels weird. Don't feel weird about that. The people will believe what the real estate what the real estate climate is doing. They will believe it because of what the real estate agents are doing and saying. So if I say that I'm sitting at my home organizing my closet because I got nothing to do, 
They believe that the market has halted and they don't want to sell their houses. The market's halted. Oh, oh my gosh, I don't want to do anything. I'm watching all these realtors not do anything with their life. And so that means they're not busy. That means houses aren't selling. That means that I don't need to sell my house. That means I'm going to sit back and do the, wait, the waiting game. But if we show them normal, hey, I just closed three transactions today. Take pictures, post it. Hey, I just wrote three contracts today. Take pictures and post it. Hey, I just got two people who didn't even want to look at a house and they still bought it. Take pictures and post it. Uh, everything that we need to do needs to be proof of normal. And I think it's fun right now to be a little bit creative. Show the creativity side of what we're doing. Get out there and show yourself being present, being in business. Even though you're alone, you can still be present. Like get into video chats, like require everybody to chat with you via like a conferencing tool or whatever that looks like. Show homes. I have a gal today that I'm going to be talking with their, them about how to do a virtual um, open house. And uh, I, I think that one's going to get a little bit weird. We've got to figure out, obviously, because you can't film people and record people without their permission and or the seller's permission, exclusive permission that you can video their home. Just FYI, in case all of you are out there showing people through FaceTime, you have to have explicit permission through the seller of the home. And your laws may be different in your states, and so you've got to check those things out. But why not be the version of normal for the world where chaos is the only thing that people are consuming? Eventually, they're going to want to see, is life going on normally? And it should be, and it is, and we can do that. So be proof that normal is possible. Uh, I think you should be able to show caution though. So that was my, I'm making sure I'm hitting my notes. You got to show caution. You can't just be like wild, wild west, right? You can't just be like, oh, everybody's out there doing all their thing. I'm out here slinging houses that you've got to be, you've got to be cautious about it. All right. Show that you're cautious, show that you're doing the right thing, show that you're showing homes, show that you're doing everything in the right way. Um, but the biggest piece of this puzzle guys is be healthy. If you feel like this is a bad idea, Connecticut, I know that y'all have got a lot more going on than we do in Houston right now. And so like be, you need your health first, but there is still the ability to show normal. You can still show what you're doing. So just be normal. Don't, don't drag into all the chaos moments. Be normal. Um, the last thing I would say is that um, think like a buyer or a seller on this side of things. Okay. So a lot of times we're looking at it as the doom and gloom side of it. But if I were a buyer or seller, I would probably be having the same feelings. I don't know that I would want my house being shown. And so think like a buyer or a seller. What would they really want? And then how can you be a solution for that? So how can you create virtual tours? How can you create virtual experiences of the homes? How can you be creative through video? How can you be creative through um, graphical interpretations of things? Like how can you saddle up with somebody who, uh, who understands these things better than you, right? A lot of us don't have the creativity button yet in the real estate because we've only just started, right? I've heard, heard a couple gals on this call that like they just started in real estate. And so what does it look like to saddle up with those who have been there? We, we should all be in the giving economy. So we should all be willing, ready, and able to give to each other. And uh, the last thing in that, man, I'm going to tell you right now, there ain't anything new under the sun. Go steal it all. Everybody jokes about the R&D department. It's like rip off and duplicate. Somebody is successful right now. Go find them, show, see what they're doing, and do it. Emulate everything. Like When you see success, emulate it. There's no shame in that. There's nothing new under the sun. Nobody has a new idea that hasn't already been thought of. Okay. So be proof of normal. You've got to be able to be proof of normal. Be your mission, vision, value to the world. Okay. Be your mission, vision, and values to the world. They need to know. And when I say they, I mean everybody who you touch need to know what you're about. If you don't know what you're about, then you are going to flounder and they're going to pay attention to the flounder. The ability to have just like certainty of who I am, where I'm going and how I'm going to get there is really attractive in the moments of chaos. It's really attractive to be able to listen to people speak with authority. It's really people just show up to listen to people, to be able to be partnered with people, to trust people, to be in relationship with people when they are certain and have clarity about who they are when they are unwavering. What's really interesting in this current time is I've watched a lot of people who have been all about social media, all about talking about their life, all about all this stuff. And as soon as this has happened, it's been really interesting to watch them drop off 
And it's because they didn't actually have clarity about what their mission, vision, and values are. And that may be me assuming a little bit too much, and yet I truly believe it. I know that right now is a, an amazing time for me to do what I do because my mission, my vision, and my values is to do exactly what's happening. I 100% can pivot and be online teaching classes to whomever wants to show up because my goal is to truly build a better together climate. I want to invest in people and I truly invest in people and everything about it is investing in people. And so I know what my mission, vision and values are and I am living it out in every single aspect of what I do. There is nothing that hasn't changed in my world, nothing that has changed in my world. Everything is normal and moving forward. The bottom can continue to fall out and I can keep moving forward with clarity and conviction. Nothing is going to shake what's happening in my world because I have that certainty of my mission, vision, and values. If you don't have that, I'm going to tell you, it is a process to really develop. I am going to, on Thursday, teach three classes in a row. Well, they're going to be, I'm going to put a gap between them where I'm going to start with values, move into vision, and do mission. So those classes are coming on Thursday, tomorrow. But you've got to be able to know that. When we have certainty of our mission, vision, values, we don't change who we are. We're able to pivot in the direction that the market's going. We're not at default of anybody telling us what we can or cannot do. We're in a position to have control to go into what's next. We have the ability to have the next best step in our lives. We don't have to wait on these things. And so I'm going to tell you, I believe in this so much that like I probably teach it 40 times a year. I believe in this so much that I probably regurgitate this story 40 times a year because it's so important to me to make sure that people can understand exactly what's going on in, the, in their world so that they can have the business that they desire and the life that they want by design. All of the people out there that are our clients, that are our consumers, that are our potential leads, they all want to know, do you care? Can you help me? And can I trust you? And the way that they know that is by showing up for the proof of who we are in our mission, vision, and values. They know if I'm going to go with you and if I can trust you because of your values. I know whether or not you can help me because of your mission. I know if you can care for me because of your vision. Okay, your mission, vision, values is going to answer everybody's greatest need, which is to know, can you care? Do you care for me? Can you help me? And can I trust you? Okay, hopefully this makes sense. We're going to shut down here in a second and start talking together. Last thing, be consistent. You like my tea? I ran out of room, so you got a little danky tea. Be consistent. Okay, pick a positive lane and stay in there. Pick a positive lane and stay there. Be a voice in the chaos and work with a healthy respect of what's possible, okay? We should all have a mentality that we're gonna conquer this and have a healthy respect for the fact that the bottom may still fall out. It's a weird, it's a weird place to be, it's a juxtaposed thought. I can win and there's a potential for me to lose and I'm gonna be okay with it, but I'm gonna show up and play. Be consistent in your message, okay? So pick a positive lane and stay there. Pick a positive lane and stay there all of your messages should be funneled through that one space. Find your voice and become that voice and be loud about that voice. Everybody right now is going to be so inundated with um, loneliness that they're going to go to social media to be able to find some sort of tribe. They're going to find their tribe on social media. Our tribes have been busted. Our need to be part of a tribe has been busted and they're going to find it through social media. Okay. That's going to be through all of the social media, Snapchat, Marco Polo, which isn't really social media, but it's kind of getting into that space a little bit. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, 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 Instagram. They're going to go find their tribes there. So you have the ability to grow your own tribe, your own raving fans by picking a positive lane and staying there and then going into people's spaces where they're at, where they're craving relationship and be relationship where they're at. I hope all of this makes sense. I wanted to always make sure I leave enough room at the end of this kind of moment. I know that I'm a talking head right now. I just, there's a lot of information to be delivered. And I think there's a lot of things that I want to create thought processes around. I want to inspire thought within people. And so I apologize just to be sitting there listening to me the whole time. But I do, I would love to be able to open up. You're welcome to unmute yourself and just to be able to speak 
out loud, like the things that you're feeling, the things you're seeing, anything that you're watching right now that uh, that you've got going on, any ahas you may have had from the conversation that we had today or the, the talk that I had today, not conversation. Um, anything that you're looking that you know that you're going to be able to put into action immediately into your world. So I'd love to be able to open it up because the way that we grow together is to actually speak together, to be together and to have conversations out loud. So you're welcome to unmute yourself and share anything if you want. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. Mm -hmm. In my Ember mug, by the way, in case you want a really beautiful mug that heats your coffee up and it keeps that at the temperature you want. Okay. Anybody? Anything? Nicole, I know you always want to talk. <laughs> Paige, Crystal, I know you. I know you even want to turn your camera on and let everybody see your face. I mean, I have showings in like an hour and I'm about to be blasting that everywhere. So people know like, hey, it's still happening. It's still going on. People are still buying. And here's what's really neat, Paige. I, I my expectation is that people are talking to their agents and agents are going, oh, my gosh, you got it. You, you don't want to do that. And to see somebody who's busy is like, yeah, I'm showing like those who want to buy are going to find a way to buy. That's yep. a big thing. Those who want to buy are going to find a way to buy. Are you an agent that cr can either physically do this? It, eventually you can. So you got to use precaution. And Paige, you need to use precaution. Like be purposeful about precaution. However, like be the person that's showing people like yeah, I, I can do this. I think right now every single one of us should be digging in and finding the investors in our worlds. Every single one of us. Because investors will always buy homes sight on scene without any challenges going into their they, they will spend money in any economy and they will buy home sight on scene every single one of your investors you need to be hitting up hey what can i do for you right now what can i do for you right now hi chad y'all might not have heard a knock on my window but chad thought that he could just bust in my office while i'm on my call <laughs> That's how I roll, son. That is how you roll. Chad is uh, an agent in our office. Um, actually, Chad, I'm curious because like this is a whole different world. You're in the farm and ranch community. Have I know it's only been a week and a half. Have you seen anything? You seen anything? Um, so, sorry again. I was swapping my TVs around. Oh yeah, no, you're fine. I was just saying you're in farm and ranch. Um, I know that you, uh, it's been a week and a half, it's farm and ranch chain, farm and ranch chain. Uh, yeah, there's lots of interest, uh, on, it seems like I'm getting more clicks on our social media ads of people that may be looking, um, uh, kind of on the higher end of, uh, of the price points that were usually were a little slower. Maybe people are looking at them to, uh, as investments, of uh, because land is always an amazing investment to have because they don't make any more of it. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. So okay. that's my, uh, that is my goal today is I'm going through my database and I'm fixing to start calling uh, all of my database. I'm going to go all the way through it and within the, in the next week and a half, hopefully it's, it's probably taking me that long to get all the way through it in touch yeah. space. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you are, all of you are the secret that's going to help you be able to uh, get this. Going, survive at a high level. Chad, I'm muting you. You're I'm muting you. You're If you want to know how to do this, like you're about to be at home, you better learn everything there is to know about farming for free. There's ways to farm your neighborhoods for free, right? I, I'll tell you right now, one of my ideas I think would be hilarious. With the toilet paper shortage, I would go buy the big mega rolls of toilet paper, and people will think you're chaotic, but buy a big old mega roll of toilet paper. So that you have like a ton of them and don't door knock, just go drop it off doorstep, put your business card in it and a note. Hey, when the shit hits the fan, know who was there for you. There's something humorous just to like make something fun out of it. Like this is the idea being creative, finding that positive message and going out there. I'm going to go through, I'm going to tell you right now, my agents will know how to farm using video at a high level because I'm going to go do it for them. I'm going to be at home figuring out my home office space. I'm going to go out and show people how do you do videos to be able to make sure that you can build your business. I'm going to show everyone this is how, this is the simplicity of it. I'm going to make sure they understand it so that then they command market share when things turn. So those of you who aren't in our area or aren't in my office, like f this is your way right now to go find those who understand farming at a high level and dig out all of the freeways. Do not spend money on farming right now because there's too much opportunity for you to do it for free. You need to be watching your budgets. You need to be watching your profit and loss statement right now. Right now is when you start to zip things up. 
I've already had offices, uh, can- agents who uh, rented offices from, from me canceling them. And I'm loving that. You got to pay stop and go with your budget. You got to be able to figure out what's happening in your budget and do the right thing with your money. So farming is going to be a big deal. Hi, Holly. We're almost about to shut down. You got anything you want to add? Want me to recap anything? You want to just tell everybody how awesome you are? He hates this probably. Nikki, I'm still, Nicole, I'm still surprised that you don't want to speak up and say anything. I thought, All right, I'll say I, hi. I thought because there you would be sharing everything. Telling us what to well, do. Most of my team is on here. So Maria. Uh, I'm, I'm giving Laria. you a yeah. <laughs> There's Laria. Say hi. So hi, um, one thing that I, I can share, I'm not sure what's going on in your market, but one yeah. thing that's happening that was just announced yesterday from our MLS is that they've, um, They've added a new showing source, which is, you know, virtual showing. So we have permission to go into these homes that tick that off and do a virtual showing for our buyers. Okay. So your MLS has already taken that step. I I actually need to look in that. I So information, the announcement, so you know what they're doing that might help your MLS move forward. Um, and I was thinking about doing a video on that because I think oh, yeah. there's a lot of agents in my market that don't know that even existed oh. because no one reads their email. So, <laughs> you oh. know. Well, and I think that's awesome because we actually had that conversation, Nicole, in our leadership the other day. Um, one of our one of our leaders in our office was like, "Yeah, it's time to go virtual. You know, get your FaceTime out and go to homes." And I was like, "Pump the brakes. You're, you're excited and." You can't do that without explicit permission. So, so there's no way in hell that that's just, it doesn't make sense. Um, and so, you got to have permission. That's awesome if they think or if they're able to in the MLS. If a seller clicks the box that they're allowing it, that they're allowing it like extensively, like they, it, it's it's open. Uh, I I think that's yeah, awesome. I want to get clarification on it because I know that there's two parts to that, right? So right. there's seller that's willing to do a walkthrough of their own home because they don't want people going in. Um, But I think it also um, covers the agent walking in and doing the virtual tour. So I'm going to get clarification before I put it out there. So I've been emailing them ever since I got sick on Wednesday (laughs) with a sinus infection. Um, So I'm like, I need, I need a virtual tour situation going on. Like, what do I do? And I'm like, I don't, my sellers do not want to put their house temporarily off the market because it stops the marketing feeds to all the third party sites. So there's gotta be something. So within like three or four days, they came up with a solution and added those fields. I love that. Awesome. I need to, I need to look into this. And I I know somebody who's pretty high up in the, our board that I need to make sure and see if we're going to be doing something like that follow suit. One of the things that I'm looking at, to be honest with you, um, and I've started to spread the word, hopefully I can uh, come through with this, but like I'm looking at our budget right now. What can my office do to let this never be a challenge ever again? And so what I'm actually looking to do is to purchase and to have in our office a free service to all of our agents to put all of their homes, use it utilizing the Matterport system. Um, have virtual tours for everybody's house, like so that I would be in Houston, one of the exclusive brokerages that every single one of our listings is virtual. So, so we don't have these issues anymore. We we can always go on as business as usual. I want to make sure that our agents are propped up to always be business as usual. And so, be with people who want to prop you up. You're going to find out real soon who's for you and who's against you. Who looked at you as a transaction and who looked at you as a relationship. And I'm telling you right now, there's no shame and going through and calling leaders out to make them get their heads out of their asses and do the right thing for us. That's just my soapbox and I'll leave it at that. Okay guys, if nobody else wants to share anything, I'm okay with cutting it off a little bit early. I'm going to put this recording out there somewhere. Um, Our agents, it'll be in our form. I'll figure out where I'll do it for the rest of us. But um, seriously, I I want you to really stop and consider. You got to be able to validate people. People need to be validated. That's a big piece to the puzzle. Know your information. Be be correct on the information. Connect people to the information. Don't be the source for it. Just connect people to it. Okay. Be accepting. Be the advocate. Advocate through that. Um, be normal. Show people that you are a sense of normal. They need to know that you are normal, that life can go on. And be consistent in your message. Pick a positive lane and stay in it. Okay. If you have any questions, guys, or you ever want to get in touch with me, I have no challenges with that. I'll drop my email right here. 
Andy Olive at kw.com. You're welcome to bother me anytime. I still have classes that I'm going to be doing for the rest of this week. I'm going to add in more classes. I'll probably be doing like two or three classes every single day. And I say classes, me talking. Hopefully I can get into some uh, communal stuff. I'm going to start bringing in some of the coaches that I'm connected with and having some conversations with them. And so we're, we're just going to keep doing this. Like this is our moment to rise together. Okay. So we can rise out of this chaos. It's going to be together and it's going to be very consistent. Consistent is your new word. I feel like this is Sesame Street. Consistent is the word of the day. All right. Y'all go be amazing.